prepare yourself for a limitless podcast hunt series. Hunt series consists of multiple episodes focused on capturing events centered around future, current, or past hunting adventures. Many of these recordings take place from the field. Turn up your volume, grab a beverage, and prepare to get your hunt on. You're going to pee into the water source now. The solution to pollution? Is dilution. That's right. Yeah. That's how we dump nuclear water in the ocean. You know what I almost forgot about? Your fireball? Fireball. I already broke my DeSerono out. Where is it? It's right here. I almost I forgot. I got a whole eight ounce bottle of it. Almost forgot. So, I'm telling you what my plan is, because I already said that I'm not going to have coffee in the morning, because we're getting up so early. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to pack my coffee cup, so that tomorrow, post-harvest... We can have a cup of coffee? I'm going to have a cup of coffee, yeah. You could. Do you have the pour-overs or the bags? Pour-over. If you want a couple bags, you can cold brew it tonight. Nope. Okay. Nope. I'm gonna. I enjoy doing that process on the side of the mountain. It doesn't um, mean you can't. Upon success, it's just a, just a really good thing to do. There should be a bottle right here in my handy. <gasps> there it is. Oh man, turn that off. That, that was, was really obnoxious. Ah. Right on. I'm starting to get a little chilly. Well, hey, where's your bottle? Let's touch tips. Just for a minute? Yeah, just not even a no, a second. Just, why would just you, a tap? Why would you do it a minute? Some people like it longer. Just uh, 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 there, uh, that's <laughs> like, a, like a millisecond. Mm. Well, greetings, Limitless Outdoor Podcast. Hunt series, 2024 mm -hmm. Revolution Canyon spring turkeys. Thunder chicken time. Yes. Ben Franklin bombers, baby. <laughs> I'm here with East Coast Nick. We're listening to a Texas night bird <laughs> known to the rest of the world <laughs> as a whippoorwill. So let's go ahead and start, we'll start, we'll start this podcast off with, uh, just throwing shade right off the bat. Why not? I mean, I mean, when I was out in Washington with Nick the Great, obviously, obviously we, uh, threw some poo in your direction. You were incorrect again. Yes, no, we, we didn't well, So we weren't, and we can, we can 100% talk about that, but. Yeah, you know, I think somebody else that we should just go ahead and flick a booger at is Chris Dunlap in Texas. <laughs> Who doesn't know that the night bird is a whippoorwill? It, it, it's going. It's yeah, been going for 30 minutes now. It, it has. It's, it it's has. Been. So, Chris, I had a lot of fun with you down in Texas when you were talking to me about night birds. And once I figured out what the what you were calling a night bird, it's a whippoorwill. And I just let that. That's a whole other story. Anyhow, here we are. Um, it's night one, closing out day one. Mm -hmm. Today was really eventful. Yeah. Just across the board. It was. Yeah. You across... you had all sorts of adventures today getting up here. Yeah. Oh my goodness, man. So uh 3.30 wake up call. And we had the windows open. It's that beautiful time of year right now on the eastern shore, probably down in Chesapeake too, where um, multiple days out of the week you can shut the AC off mm -hmm. and just manage the home interior temperature by windows being opened yep and um, tara and i prefer to, to have the house pretty cold when we sleep we like it in the 60s like somewhere between 65 and 68 so we had the windows open when my alarm went off i mean you could just hear the torrential downpour outside and 
I'm thinking to myself, man, I am so thankful I loaded all of my stuff the night before. The not even 20 yard walk from the front door, which is under a patio, to the truck, and the truck was locked. So from the front door, under cover, to the truck, unlock it with the keypad, and jump in. I had a grocery sack with some healthy snacks for the drive, and I had two Yetis in my hand. Now, is it a um, less educated person's move not to unlock the vehicle before you get to it when it's So ready? my keys were locked inside of it. Mm. Very well. In that short transit, again, it's not even 20 yards, <laughs> I soaked. It was coming down that hard. Um, and then I fought to stay awake that for the first hour and a half that morning, two hours. Um, it was just rough. And um, got through DC traffic, and I got all the way up here to the trailhead. Well, almost near, the, almost the trailhead. Yeah, almost <laughs> to the trailhead. So as I was so driving, close. <laughs> as I was driving in, a truck came, was coming from the opposite direction, flashing his lights at me. And as I slowed down, his window was rolling down. Um, it wasn't a hunter. I think the guy was trying to go into fish. And he asked me where I was going, and I told him um, where I was headed. And he said, yeah, you can't, you can't get there. The road's closed. I was like, what? So then I started looking at the maps, and the whole road that we, were, we used to access here, is, it's red. It's, the whole thing's supposed to be. It, it's showing mm -hmm. that it's shut down. And uh, so, you know, I asked him, you know, hey, where'd you turn around this and that? So I drove all the way as, as far as I could, came to the barricade, and there was a real good quality... Um, cat cut that I could back into. So I just, I said, well, worst case scenario is I have an additional two miles to walk to get to the trailhead, mm -hmm. to get to get in here. And that, if that's what I got to do today, that's what I got to do. So I, I got out and when I got out of the truck, I could hear the excavator. So the excavator, the road work was close and it was active. I mean, it was like 100, 200 yards. So I just, I geared up, got all my stuff ready, and I just took off down the road and met the crew. And um, to make that story short, there was a lot of conversation that took place with three, with actually all four of them that were there. Um, the dump truck driver ended up driving me from the work site all the way to our trailhead. It was great. And we had a great conversation. He's from Kentucky. So they're, uh, they're a crew out of Kentucky staying in Harrisburg and they're up here doing road repair on the, in the national forest. Okay. Super nice guys. And, um, he brought me all the way to the trailhead. I rode sideboard on the dump truck going down the road and, uh, his nickname is Scolby. So now hunting up here in this area, we've yeah, met Skeeter, Skeeter and Scolby. <laughs> it's great, man. Um, so then the fun really begins. I had a great trek in other than it's raining. It's been raining a lot. And um, this whole canyon floor, the whole bottom of the canyon is nettles. Yep, solid. S carpeted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where there's not nettles, there's nettles. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Mm -hmm. If it's not rock, it's nettles. Correct. <laughs> and wherever there's rocks, they're covered by nettles and uh but the trail's clear and despite all of the rainfall they've had the cfm in the in the stream or the creek because it's not a river i would agree it was dry last year um <laughs> it's manageable you know it's not overflowing mm -hmm. and um yeah you had to pick your way across but you did, we could get yeah. across it so I, uh, I hit a particular rock face that we have to skirt or navigate to hit a crossing, slipped and fell backwards and crushed my shotgun into the rock wall. It's just heartbreaking. And so I went through all of the courses of action for that, you know, and I'm not gonna go through all of the things that ran through my head at that point in time, especially because my vehicle wasn't just three quarters of a mile away from me at that point. And I wouldn't, pa I wouldn't just lock it in the truck and then come in here and hunt with you for days on end with my really cool 
customized retache turkey gun laying in the back seat of my truck, right? So I was just like, I brought three shells on this trip. I brought three saddies fatties. My thought process is I have two tags. I don't miss in the like, if in the happenstance that I did miss, I have one backup shot. And when you're turkey hunting, you rarely get a backup shot. You get one, you get one trigger pull. You either have success or you, you're tucking your tail and going back to camp. And then I have five rounds of 357 for black bears should I need them. And, uh, and I'm just thinking, even if I did go back to the truck and go someplace where I could pattern my gun, I only had three shells with me. So I'm like, if I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to check pattern when I put pattern on turkey. That was my, I was like, I'm just, I'm just, I'm going to look and see where the scuff marks are when I actually stop and take the gun off the pack. And then if it looks bad, then I'm just going to, I'm going to roll the dice and pattern my gun when I <laughs> slap the trigger on a. Benjamin on a Ben Franklin bomber. Ben Franklin. Anyhow, so that happened. I think I found rhubarb growing on the side of the trail. I mean, it's a big, healthy plant, red stalks. It looks, if it's not rhubarb, it's a doppelganger. Growing right on the side of the trail. So I'll show you that picture, don't let me forget. Yeah. Anyhow, um, got in here again, busting through nettles to get to camp. Camp was a bed of nettles. So I, sticks were my lawn mowers. I went through three lawn mowers um, mowing the lawn for us before I rolled out I do out appreciate camp. that. I set up my tent. I had a, I had a quinoa bowl and then I repacked all my stuff all my stuff, including three Montana decoys. And, um, and I, and I headed up onto the ridge and, um, it was raining. So I wasn't pulling my box call out. Now everybody's heard me talk about my favorite box call. And, and again, I'm, I predominantly use Phelps game calls and I do that for many reasons, but the most important reason is they're just really good quality calls. But my turkey box call, my favorite, it's my favorite call, hands down. Um, and it's my favorite box call. It's made by um, Mr. Boblet. It's a, it's a Pacific Northwest uh, made call. But because of the rain, um, I won't pull it out in the rain and get it wet because it'll potentially warp it or split it. And it's kind of a one of a kind call. Mm -hmm. I can't get, I can't replace it. And um, not all, even, this, even if you go get a mass produced box call, they don't all sound exactly the same and the birds don't necessarily react to them the same. So I, I really want to keep this call in, in the fight as long as I can. So I couldn't use a box call. And um, I got all the way up to the top of the ridge and I was recocking my pack. I was pulling the gun off of the, out of the, um, the gun boot. And, and it had stopped raining as I was climbing up the ridge. And as soon as I got ready to pull the box call out, starts raining. raining again. Starts raining again. Now this whole time, you're, you and I are communicating. Yep, we're messaging you back and forth. Yeah, I'm, With since, some delay. Since the point that you woke up in the morning, we start either text message or Facebook messaging, yeah. and then there was a phone call. Yep, yeah, so I had a slightly different route today. So I was up at 3.30, um, went into work, had to per park off premises um, and walk in because of the, the firearms in the vehicle. They kind of frowned upon that. Um, my ride that was supposed to pick me up, um, their kid got sick last night, so he called out. So I had about a quarter mile walk around in the rain this morning to get in Nice. <laughs> so, rain yep. gear? No, no. I left my umbrella at work. <laughs> you own an umbrella? I do for around work. It's a nice one. It's red and black. Your and new nickname is Mary Poppins. Very well. <laughs> um, and I had my seven hours of work today. I skipped out at, um, at noon, got on the road. That's right about the time I think you were hitting a trailhead is right when I got on the road. Um, main way away up here off and on showers. Got to the trailhead and it, I ran into a few light mists on the way in, 
but nothing crazy. Um, I think I jumped one hen on the way in. It was still a ways in front of me. I didn't get a good look at it, just the wing. But yeah, and we were just chatting back and forth the whole time. The Garmin in reaches doing their job. Yeah, they they they're they're working even even with this significant um, cloud cover and all the rain. They're still they're still working pretty good. Mm -hmm. I hit the trailhead 11 because I was I was at the right almost to the bifurcation of the canyon um, at 11:30 because. Knowing your plan was to call coming all the way up the canyon, mm -hmm. I did not want to come in and call um, walking up the canyon. I know that I was the only person that came up the canyon today because I was cutting spider webs all the way up. I did pass a hunter coming up the road into the lake today. I don't know what if he had, you know, gone in any or did anything, but well, he wasn't was driving out. He wasn't in this canyon system because. I was taking all the spider webs to the face like a mm -hmm. champ. But um, I, rather than hit the turkey call, um, knowing that a couple of hours later you were coming in, I, did, I didn't, I just, I was like, I just want to get in here and I'm going to go, I'm going to go focus elsewhere. I was using Jason Phelps' signature diaphragm. And I got an Eastern to respond to that at 11.30 this morning. And that's the elk call. That's the, on an elk, on an elk bugle. Mm -hmm. Had an Eastern um, turkey in Virginia shot gobble to Jason's diaphragm. This was pretty cool. He was way off mm -hmm. um, in the direction that we're going to go hunt tomorrow. Yep, where we're going tomorrow. So... Yeah, that's the first bird that I heard this morning. And um, so back to getting up on top of the ridge, I had, uh, there wasn't any rain. I was getting ready to get the box call out. And boom, as soon as I look at my pack to pull my box call out of the pack, it started raining. So I shifted over to, I have some Phelps diaphragms. Um, I've, I'm using um, one of the rain, the, what, the pawn um, out of the rain series and Hit the, the diaphragm a couple of times, no response, and uh, shouldered my pack, and, and I had stowed my, my trekking poles at that point in time, and as I'm moving forward, I, I'm carrying my shotgun, and I'm feeling something hit my leg, and I couldn't, I was like, what is that? And I finally looked down, it was my sling. So the little, the little swivel head that comes out of the um mag tube the the yeah the end of the magazine mm -hmm. the 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 um the cap the screw cap it had unthreaded and had fallen out so fortunately i had some shock cord tied around the end of my sling because it's what i use to for a for a, on a hook when i when i'm using that sling on on like a firearm mm -hmm. when i'm tree saddle hunting i just wrap that around the barrel and off I went. So I still have a functioning sling, but I'm missing a piece off my shotgun. <laughs> and uh, so that happened. And something something else broke. What did I say? Something else broke. What else did you do? I'm trying to remember now. Because I was like, holy cow, I've had a day. Yeah, you, you definitely had a day. Or I'll, I'll, it'll come to us. So anyhow, um, I went up to an area that Nick and I have scouted and hunted and i've killed up in that area it's where I, it was it was within a quarter mile or so of where i harvested my deer yeah if not closer and um i found a really cool spot it's a place on the topo map that we've looked at that we've never walked into we've we've been we were close last year but close. then we started chasing the toms around right yep. before noon and we never got over to it so i got over into that spot and um i just found a really cool little um kill box and it's um it's where the oaks it they, they they start start to thicken up a little bit and then it starts hitting the mountain laurel and i found another triple trunked oak that it's a great spot to deer hunt as well and i just thought this is it this is where i'm going to sit until it gets dark and roost birds and um 
So I have three Montana decoys that I pack in when we do pack in hunts. I have two hens and a Jake. So I stake them out. Now there's a learning lesson here that we're gonna have fun talking about. Um, but I have a sound mentality on why I was setting up the way that I was, but I've learned a lesson today that I'll never do it again. So I've, when it comes to placing a turkey decoy, and I didn't do, I wouldn't do it every single time, but I wasn't opposed to doing it because of the thought process behind it. I would put a decoy behind an object within my kill range. And the way I was set up today was basically kind of a diamond shape. I was on a little bit of higher ground, had a really, really good um, two trunked oak that I could sit against with some brush around me. Um, I was concealed really well, super comfortable in this little packable ground chair that I have. And then I had a, at about 20 degrees off to my right, at about 12 yards or so, I had a hen. And then about 20 degrees, um, about 15 yards or so, so they were slightly staggered, I had another hen. And then I put the, the Jake straight out in front of me and I had him down at like 20 yards. But he, it was behind a massive oak tree. And I will put a decoy behind an object with the idea that if, especially the Jake, that when a Tom comes in, if he gets focused on that Jake, when it's behind the tree, it gives me the opportunity to move and shift if I need to. Um, in using that, that whatever that object is, is concealment. Well, what happened today is I'm sitting there and I took my time, Nick. I just, I really enjoyed my day. I didn't get in a big hurry. Mm -hmm. And I got up there and took my time getting set up and I settled in and realized that, hey, I have cell service. And um, so I sent out a couple of text messages and whatnot. And then it's like, all right, the woods have settled down. I, I think it's time for me to maybe send out a call. So I, it was raining. So I hit the, hit the diaphragm and nothing. And um, about 10, 15 minutes went by and it stopped raining, like just went dead. No wind, no rain, other than water dripping off the leaves. Songbirds started firing off. I could hear robins and jays and, and I'm like, you know what? It hasn't been very long since I hit that diaphragm, but I've got a break in the weather. I'm gonna get the box call out. So I, I pulled out the, the music maker and hit a couple of clucks and putts and three yelps, followed by another couple of clucks and three more yelps and a couple of putts. And I got a gobble. And he was 150, 200 yards to my left. So I stowed the box call and within two minutes that was um at uh 15 23 is when i called and got the first gobble 15 25 he gobbled again and i say that because i looked at my watch and i never called again i just sat there quietly and um i text you I sent you a message. I don't know if you ever got it, but it, I just put gobble. Yep, I got the gobble. Okay. And, uh, and then I just sat there and I thought, you know what? He knows where I'm at. I'm not going to sit here and do a lot of calling at him. I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to let him come. Well, 30 minutes into that sit, I started second guessing myself. But I held my ground. I was like, I'm not doing it. Um, and it started sprinkling a little bit again. So it's like, I don't want to get the box call out. Um, he didn't answer to the diaphragm, whether he, he was out of range from it or not. I don't know. But as soon as I pulled out the boblet box call, he hammered it. So I, and I didn't want to pull my box call out and that was excess movement because it was underneath the cover of my pack. So I just sat there, man. And, um, that bird came in. For, it took him 40 minutes. He came in dead quiet. And when he came in, he came out of the underbrush and was behind the tree on my Jake decoy in an instant. Couldn't see him. 
and I tracked my gun across to the right because I thought he was going to come across to the right um, because he just moved. He was he was sneaking, but on a mission. And so I moved to the right and I was waiting and I could see grass moving around from him doing whatever it was he was doing to my Jake decoy that I unfortunately did not get to watch. And then his head poked out to the left side again. Like he looked over to my, to the hand to the, to my left. And then his head went back behind the tree. So I thought, well, okay, he's going to come out to the left. So I, I shifted back over to the left and then nothing was happening. Nothing was happening and nothing was happening. I was like, what is going on? So I shifted my gun back over to the right and I'm, and I'm, and I've, I, I have my red dot aimed down range where it, I'm like, if he comes out from behind that tree, I'm, my dot's already on him. And I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. It seems like I was sitting there forever. And then I see him down below. He's now at about, he was at 30 yards. I hadn't ranged it, but he was, all I could see was a upper middle neck and head. And when I, I, I got the dot on him and then his head was gone, I was like, holy cow, I just missed the up. I had this turkey at 20 yards. I, holy cow. Yeah. And then I still had the red dot on that spot. He, he stuck his neck. It's like he did, he was going to take one last look back uphill at the setup, like, hmm, what was that? And when he poked his head out, I was, it was just like everything was lined up and slapped the trigger and he was down. 40 minutes. It was just, it was textbook. It was so cool, man. And it was, I pulled the trigger pretty much right when you were stepping away from the truck. Yep. Yeah, but you, the, the lesson you learned there is keep the decoy out from behind the big trees. It's, yeah, you know, it's, so um, it, it, this, it's sound theory. We were talking about it when I, I met him at the trail right by, right where we break off to go into camp. And as soon as I saw him at the trail, I was like, he got a bird. Cause there's no way he'd be down from that ridge unless there was a bird at camp. And he was talking about it and you know, he explained the reason it, it to me, it makes sense. It gives you the opportunity to shift if you need to shift, but I don't know if it's just, is it too big of a tree or is it just not something you would want to do? Like you said, because it, you know, they can hide behind it and then sneak off. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really fortunate that, um, that it, he went in the direction that he did and then he wanted to take one last peek. Mm -hmm. Um, the Montana decoys, they're awesome. If you have any desire in doing some type of a backcountry hunt and you want to take decoys, check out the new Montana decoy, their, their new te turkey decoys, just because the way they have them designed, um, they're, they're legitimate and um, they're a lot of fun to hunt behind. And they're, they're really lightweight. Yeah, so they my, pack up real nice. They do. I am, we're in here for five days, four nights if we go the distance. And I, when I left the trailhead, I had my, all of my, you know, food, water, shelter, and my recording gear, and all um, three decoys. And my pack was 51 pounds and with three liters of water in it, 51 pounds. So to be able to pack in three turkey decoys with you that are nice looking modern decoys, that's, that's, not, a, that's not a pack load of suffrage. It's very nope. manageable, right? Um, and I think they're really, really effective. And I'm, I'm, it's funny, you know, I, I came in and, and I, I mowed down all the nettles in here and, and I pitched my tent and I had a snack before I took off, I took off up for the ridge and I almost didn't take the decoys. I just, I, I was like, I'm really going to lighten my pack. I just want to jam up and I want to, I want to move quick and get up on top of the ridge and then have as much daylight as I could have up there today. 
and then I it was like Aaron you just packed those decoys yeah. all the way in here to the pitch site why would you then leave them in camp and not take them up and deploy them tonight it's like you've already brought them this far that's dumb why are you packing in gear that you're not going to use mm -hmm. so I um and here's the here's the here's the cool part once I came in and I pitched my tent and I and I offloaded everything that I didn't need for the hunt those three decoys and the Badlands Mark Six pack in the bottom compartment where you know I that's where I stuff my tent and pad and ground cloth and and um, shelter. Those three decoys fit in that little space perfectly. Okay, it's awesome. So uh, no, it's a great tool for this type of an application, and. Um, so I had some fun sending out some text messages and stuff, and then I, I came off the mountain, and we linked up out on the trail, yep, and um, chatted for a few minutes, and then headed in here to camp. This is this is our little spot right here. It's like this is our little magnet. We just keep getting drawn back to this spot. Mm-hmm. It's a nice little spot. So two people easily, three people can work, three shelters can work. Yeah. But it's kind of right in the center of the canyons, and we can go anywhere we want to from here. So. We can, yeah. A lot of a lot of options and opportunity um, from this little spot. Now, again, it's low ground, so you have to you have to plan your hunt around the fact that you're on low ground. Um, turkeys can't smell, so we have that going for us. But a um, couple of things that we did tonight um, that we want to share how do you care for a bird in the backcountry environment especially if you're going to be back here for multiple days so i packed in um, a baggie of salt and then two other empty baggies with um, rubber bands in them and the rubber bands it's it's the blue or purple rubber bands that you get on produce at the grocery mm -hmm. store um, that those small baggies and the salt rubber bands are for the beard so you can get your beard and salt if if that's what you like to do I prefer to do that so the beard off this turkey is already in a bag of salt and then for the tail fan last year I packed in hangers that have the built-in um, uh, clips. clips on them and I was after packing those in and out last year, I was thinking, man, there's got to be a better way. Why am, is there a way that I can do this in the field without packing in more stuff? Well, in my kill kit, I carry a like eight inch length of 550 cord. Well, 550 cord has guts. The little tiny white 550 cords, right? So I just figured, man, the woods is loaded with green sticks. So why not just take a green stick and 550 cord and stretch your fan out on a stick tie it up and tie it up so that's what we did tonight and uh it worked out pretty well so it's hanging up in the branches um you know rigoring in place and then for meat care this is the fun one yeah i'm, I'm very curious if this is going to work out like we wanted to i, I got think, high hopes for it i do too I, I i think that uh i i think that it's going to be successful so we brought in um, free gallon freezer bags and then a, a large dry bag. So we've breasted the bird out, cut the legs off. The breasts have been cleaned and rinsed and they're in a gallon Ziploc bag. The legs have been stripped and rinsed and they're in a gallon Ziploc bag. Mm -hmm. um, squeezed as much air out of said bags as we could. Then we put the Ziploc bags in a dry bag, sealed, squeezed as much air out of that as possible, sealed it up, and then we sunk it into the creek and put rocks on top of it so it's submerged. Mm -hmm. And that water is pretty chilly still. So. It's, yeah, you can't hold your, well, let me rephrase, can't. It would be uncomfortable if you held your hand submerged in it, bare hand in it for if you held it in there for a minute, it's going to be you'd, you'd be unhappy. Yeah. yeah, like you could go sit in it and do a, uh, you know, do your morning cold bath in it, and in ten minutes you would be, yeah, you would be yeah, done. You, you, I don't think you're going that long in it. Yeah, but. it's cold. It's mountain cold. Mm-hmm. 
So that's how we're caring for the meat so that we don't have to pack a turkey out all the way back out to the truck because we have, we came in here with four tags. And six so, tags. Six. Thought There's we could only kill two in here. Thought it was six. Two each. Thought it was three. Is or it? Is it because of the national forest? I, I think, thought it was three. I think we can, way, we can only we kill can two each in here. You could kill another one elsewhere, elsewhere in the state, but we can get two in here. One a day up to two um, in the national forest. Um, at least that's my interpretation. But um, thinking that that's viable meat care so that we don't have to pack that bird out to the truck and put it on ice. Mm -hmm. So that was, um, we, we spent some time planning that out and now we're putting that plan into action. So it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be nice if that worked out. It saves us six miles a, a trekking at night just to <laughs> drop off a bird. <laughs> six miles per bird, yeah. It's a light load to get to the truck. It is. Yeah, it is. especially once you dress it out. Yeah. A lot yeah. better than a deer. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. So something that I got to do tonight outside of harvesting a bird and uh, so, <clears throat> sorry about that. Lucky the lid was on. Got to send out the code word today. So we like to use code words. And um, my, my, my dad and I and our hunting camp, we've used code words since I was a kid. And then, you know, the, the military background having code words and whatnot and so last year we came up with the with the code word of sesame street if um if one of us got a bird we could send that um to each other or um through the garmin to f family or friends and just tell them hey if you get if you get a text from me that says sesame street you know we got a big bird down so we uh we got to send code word Sesame Street out of Revolution Canyon tonight. That was kind of fun. But um, talking about food, before I share mine, I want you to share what you did with your meal because it's for us. It's for, very engineering of me. It, it, it is, yes. It's very bacheloresque of you. But it worked well. It did, yes. It worked Do really share, well. share. Um, so, I'm still on the peak refuels, but they're all pretty much the same. They come in a big foil bag. Um, we both tried just going to a Ziploc bag um, the last couple of trips, and that it works decently. Um, it's a lot lighter, takes up less room, easier to pack. Um, but eating out of a Ziploc bag can be a pain in the butt, especially when they're warm. They just turn into like this flimsy little. It burns annoying. your hands. It burns your hands, you know. It's burning your hands, yet it's still getting too cold before you can really eat the yep. whole thing. And it's just, it wasn't fun. And um, if it's if it's one of the meals that um, is like a messy sandwich in a fishing boat, you know, you're just, you're pushing it around. It's it's just, fall, it just it's, doesn't work well. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. work well. I mean, there's nothing, the only thing worse than trying to eat a sloppy peak refuel meal out of a Ziploc bag is a messy sandwich in the boat. <laughs> so I'm thinking how can I make this better? Cause this is just annoying. Um, so I, I can't even tell you where I got the idea from, but I was like, why don't I make a bag that fits in the jet boil? So I got the um, vacuum sealer at home and the vacuum, the roll is a vacuum bag that you just make your own bag. So I sized them to fit. So when you fill them up and they go around, they're the same diameter as the jet boil. And on the bottom, I did angles on two sides and then pulled it flat and sealed it across the other way. And I can fill them up with water and sit them on my counter and they will sit there with two cups of water in them up straight by themselves, self-supported. And they fit phenomenal into the jet boils. So tonight it worked out great. I boiled the water, I pulled it into the bag, I dropped the bag right into the jet boil, put the lid on the jet boil, waited 10 minutes. It was piping hot. There was no mess. You could just stir it up in the jet boil. There was no extra bag that was flopping around or making folds in there you couldn't get to. Um, hot meal, hands weren't burning, meal was hot. Got every last bite out of it without having to fight a fold. It worked out great. It was pretty and impressive. And they packed down really, because they're, yeah. they're vacuum sealed again, yeah. but not in the big bags. 
they pack down nice and tight. So I went on a limb on that one because I did my dinners that way. I did my lunches that way. I did my breakfast that way. You said so, limb. You said limb. That's pretty funny. Like limb hanger. Mm, mm. One of us got a limb hanger. One, one of us does. <laughs> Hopefully the other will have one tomorrow. Uh, all right, so so carry, yeah, we don't want to talk about that yet. Carry on. Um, yeah, so it worked out great um, tonight. Um, I'm definitely, you know, assuming it's going to work out just as well, you know, for the rest of the trip. I will probably be doing this moving forward. It takes an extra couple minutes to make the bags. Um, but I used, I think it was a 10-inch roll and just... Um, basically cut one end that's pre-sealed off and seal the other two sides to make it and that that the height of that was perfect um you could cut the top off and it was just above the jet boil um, the top of the jet boil and it worked out great so so i want to do that for um you know i've i've gone i've you know i've i've gone on this this soul-seeking experience with my top ramen and i've now shifted to quinoa so i my afternoon top ramen has turned into a quinoa bowl, more or less. Mm -hmm. And I want to build out my quinoa bowl like that because eating my quinoa today was a pain. Should I send you a drawing and you can, you can I, build I, it to spec? No, I want schematics. Well, that would be a drawing, sir. I want schematics. Okay, I'll write schematic on the top. Okay. If I can spell Thank it. Thank you. Could, be Could you put spell. them in, like in the bottom left corner? I don't want it on the top. Very well. The top in the Manila folder or a green folder? Mmm. Oof. Let me ponder that. That's a tough question. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I want the title of what it is on the top. Schematic can go on like the bottom left corner. Should I bring some stamps home from work and? Are you gonna rubber stamp it? I could. Okay. All right. Just for you. Just don't triple stamp it because you can't triple stamp a double stamp. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so I was happy. It worked out great. It was no mess. Easy to do. It it was cool. I enjoyed watching that adventure. Um, why East Coast Nick was relegating me with his with his Brain meal power. pouch design, Smarts, which I'm not knocking it. Looks. It is. I'm pretty. <laughs> it's it's impressive. I mean, he's put together a really really good design there. I was prepping and cooking. There's a big bug flying in front of that red light. It is crawling in front of that. Oh, it is, is large, yeah. Wow. Large insect. <laughs> Was that, is that a beetle or a... Sp I think it's a beetle. Let's say, if that's a spider, the abdomen on that thing is... <laughs> it's massive. Ma massive. You it go just get, blocked the light. You go get oh, it. Oh, no, sir. I think that's a giant wolf spider. I'm going to grab this thing and crawl <laughs> into my tent now. <laughs> um, so I have a, I have a bunch of... Uh, on point adventure food with me and uh justin and his wife sent me um a meal that's not out on the market yet but they've given me permission to go ahead and and uh do kind of like a verbal debut of it so tonight for dinner i had um creamy steak and garlic pasta and now, Nick's pouch design is pretty incredible for his meal. But for, for purchased freeze-dried backpacking meals, I think On Point Adventure Foods has got it dialed in for what you buy from like the store or online. Their pack is a lot more manageable than the Peaks. The Absolutely. Peaks are like double the pack that you actually need. It's like, And if you don't have a two foot spoon, you're not getting to the bottom yeah, of it. It's like right. when you, I'm not knocking, Peak Refuel. No, I is, love the meals. A, it's a great company. They're a great company. There's a lot of a extra package time. there. <laughs> it's like a bag of chips. Yeah. You open a bag of chips and the- It's half full. <laughs> if that. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's a lot of food in them. It's just a big bag, massive bag, and I mean they take up a ton of room and space in your pack, and that's why we switched to the Ziploc bags. And now Nick's got his bachelorette design. But um, the uh, the On Point <laughs> Adventure Foods, their pouches. Uh, I I put I put all my other yeah, meals. They're away. only like six inches high, though. I mean, it's 
and they're and they have they have a Ziploc seal on them, mm -hmm. and they are vacuum sealed. Where pretty much all of your other freeze dried food bags, they're not. They, they, there's they're nitrogen air void, filled, yeah. right? So their their pouches are great. But anyhow, I had that creamy steak and garlic pasta tonight. Wow, was that good? So I strongly recommend um, anybody listening that as soon as it's a big bug. That's yeah, a big bug. <laughs> he landed on me earlier. I jumped. I don't know if you saw it. I figured he didn't because you would have laughed at me. I did. I, I heard the squeal, so I didn't have to look. <laughs> so uh, it was a squeal or a whimper or a little bit of both, but um, I, I don't think it picked up on your mic. It did, didn't pick that's up a, on that's my a mic. Shame. But um, no, look for the On Point Adventure Foods uh, creamy garlic and steak pasta in the very near future. And. Um, chatting with Justin a week ago, it sounds like they might have one or two other new meals hitting their lineup before fall big game season kicks off. So that was, uh, that was a treat tonight. I do have their strawberry shortcake for us, but we're, uh, man, it's already- It got late quick tonight on us. It so. did, yeah. And um, we have a three o'clock wake up call. Two-ish uh, mile hike. To, we have to we have to leave camp no later than three thirty. So, three o'clock wake up call for three thirty departure. Um, almost a two mile trek off trail to get to where we're going to stage to work birds tomorrow. And of the next, so we have Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So of the next three full days we have to hunt. Tomorrow's the only day that we're not having rain. And solid rain. And Friday and Saturday right now, we're really looking like if we don't get it done tomorrow, if we don't fill a tag for you tomorrow, Friday and Saturday may not. I mean, we're talking about 100% rain all day, every day. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about well over an inch on Saturday. It's going to be bad. It's going to be nasty. Yeah. So, but the goal is to fill one of your tags. Mm-hmm. Yeah, today's tomorrow is looking like a really nice day, mid 60s, very little wind. Like temperatures going up real quick tomorrow morning, or not temperature, but the the pressure is going to go up quick yep. in the morning. So, and it's been raining for a few days up here, so I'm hopeful that the birds will get out and be active tomorrow. I I have high hopes as well. And yeah. Hopefully your your little song box over there will mm. If we'll do its thing again with the, with the uh, with the weather that they have predicted for tomorrow. It will be singing. Uh, we're I think I'm going to nickname that thing Pandora's Box because when I open it, things die. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hey, check it out. I didn't get to use it today. Um, all you Badlands fans, for your chest rig, um, the uh, the amazing Nate Remington. Uh, I, I don't know if Nate's that amazing, but his beard is. Um, maybe a little bit of both. Anyhow, he sent me a bear spray holder. Well, I don't carry bear spray. I carry a 357 wheel gun. That's my bear spray. Um, and so I haven't used this bear spray attachment for my bino harness. Your song box going to fit in it? Pandora's box fits in it like a glove. It is, it's sweet. I didn't get to, it's, it's on my, it's on my bino harness right now. Mm. I couldn't use it today because there was too much rain. Yeah, but it'll be dry tomorrow for you. Tomorrow, Pandora's box will be going for a ride in my, and my custom to me, <laughs> Badlands turkey box <laughs> call pouch <laughs> that attaches to my Badlands chest rig. It's pretty cool. So, it, all you Badlands fans, if you, don't have an overcompensated gigantic box call because you don't need a big box call to call in a bird. It will fit inside your bear spray pouch. It's good to know. Yeah. It's good to know. Should we talk about Chris Dunlap a little bit more? Or should we let him go ahead and lick his wounds? I was going to put the honorable mention out to this little thing right here tonight. This thing has been a lifesaver mm. this evening. We got a warning a couple days ago that the bugs were bad. And that's an understatement out here right now. Um, and I had never used a thermocell before. 
and I finally bit the bullet and, and got this one for this trip. I know you brought yours in too. We lit it up in camp and within 10 minutes, we haven't seen mosquito. And we've been sitting here for an hour and a half, you know, doing our stuff around camp. It's fantastic. The mosquitoes out here right now, they're like gang level extremists. Dude, it's bad. <laughs> I have I have two coats of Sawyers on all my kit. And then I have a can of the, um, what brand is it? It's red. Um, that you can find it in the sportsman section of Walmart or most of your outdoor stores. It's in a, they have a dark green can and a red can. The red can is more for ticks, but it works great on mosquitoes. I wear it all the time in the yard. I packed a can of it in here. I've sprayed that stuff on my upper body and head and my hat three times today these mosquitoes don't care mm -hmm. they like kamikaze yeah yeah it's i got out of the truck like i got changed in the truck today because i'm like i'm not dealing with this i got out of the truck and wasn't out of the truck for 10 minutes i grabbed my gator and put it on my neck hold it up over my face and my lightweight head cap and put that on my cap. I'm like, I'm just not dealing with this on the walk-in. Like, I covered up everything just Did to you? walk in. <laughs> yep, I'm like, I'm not dealing with it. <laughs> yeah, they're, so it's, they're pretty vicious. They're nasty, man. They are nasty. They're pretty vicious. We were also told that um, guys that have been turkey hunting the past couple of weeks in this region have seen an uncommon um, population of copperheads. Couple of yeah. Copperheads, yep, not yep. copper mouth. Yeah, cotton mouth. Yeah, copperhead. There you go. Yeah, yeah, copperhead. Past my bedtime. Um, did not. Neither one of us saw snakes today. So um, fingers crossed. Stay yep, that way. Knock on wood that um, you had to say something. That the rest of the trip will will be sans snakes. But I, is there anything else we want to chat about in this episode? I don't think so. I mean, it's getting late. We got an early morning we tomorrow do, morning. Yeah, yeah. I got the cold brew coffee more going because I need my caffeine in the morning. So. so here's the cool part. You know, we're going to record every night that we're in here. So uh, there will be more to come. Um, hopefully we have another success success story um, for, for you listeners. Um, just a quick shout out. Um, sponsors for the Limitless podcast. We have some great ones, and I'm not going to share the codes um, in this episode, but I do want I do want to say thank you um, to Hunting Day Coffee. You can get a 10% discount at Hunting Day Coffee. Listener codes are um, they're uh, shared in some other of the Limitless podcast episodes. So Hunting Day Coffee 10%. Um, Phelps Game Calls. Uh, they have offered a 20% discount on your on one order, not one item, but one order. It's a one-time use code. That's 20% discount. And then we have um, Vortex Optics. Vortex Optics is a 25% discount through Euro Optics. So any Vortex product that you order through Euro Optics, you get 25% off of. Um, we also have Wilderness Athlete. Wilderness Athlete is 20% off um, any of your orders at their website. And I have the Love Sauce Hot Sauce. That is 10% off of any order, $12 or more. Um, so who have I talked about? I've talked about um, Hunting Day Coffee, On Point Nutrition, or On Point Adventure Foods, Mm -hmm. Vortex, Wilderness Athlete, um, Phelps Game Calls, and the Love, Love Sauce. Sauce. That's it. That's 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 the current six sponsors of the Limitless Podcast. And again, um, those codes, if you use them, it does it benefits me in in no way, shape, or form. Those codes are purely for you as a listener's benefit. So with that, I think we'll wrap this episode up and get these lights turned out and crawl into the fart sacks for a nice 3 a.m. wake up call finish putting our our fart sacks together yeah <laughs> yeah mine's mine's still in its dry bag so it's quarter to 10 yeah it's, yeah. it's time to go to bed any uh, anything else that you want to bring up real quick no i'm, I'm good okay so it's a good day let's get out there bright and early well 
If you're listening to this on your radio, um, you might enjoy it a little bit more on YouTube because you actually get to see us in camp. It, we're actually filming from a green, green screen. screen. It, it's this screen behind mm-hmm. us is green. So yeah, we're. I mean, we're we're like. I Hollywood. do. It, I do expect some sweet um, stuff happening behind us. Yeah. On YouTube, it's like Hollywood level right here. I, I want to see some wildebeest running across. I want to see something crazy going on. Oh, wow, that wildebeest. I mean, we're out here filming. Well, okay, so where the wildebeest some, some, come some from? Some grizzlies. I don't know. Pick something. A wildebeest. Yeah, have your turkey come in here and do a little gobble gobble, run away. Yeah, my turkey's not. I mean, it's my turkey's done. Yeah. <laughs> it's in pieces. <laughs> hey, he I, said, gave, I gave you a green streak. I carried this all the way in here for you. He said wildebeest. That's, I you went straight to the wildebeest. Who doesn't want to see a wildebeest? That was your first choice. Chris Dunlap is probably going to shoot one in Africa. Good for him. Yeah. Hey, Chris, let us know. This is this is homework for Chris Dunlap. Let us know if they have Texas nightbirds in, <laughs> in Africa. Africa. <laughs> All right. You can't help yourself. You can't. All right. Thanks for listening. Good night, guys. Be limitless.